call to order the March 21st meeting of the City of Newburn Planning and Zoning. Um, Kendrick, can I get a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Board Member Deering. Here. Board Member Dunn. Let the record show she's absent. Board Member Aluzo. Let the record show he is absent. Uh, Chairman Jefferson. Here. Board Member Ingram. Here. Board Member Ms. Kelly Kaiser. Let the record show she's absent. Board Member Brownell. Here. And Board Member Ballard. Here. We have a quorum. And yes, we have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, everybody, please uh, rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance to our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'm going to take the next item here for Chairman's uh, remarks and just um, speak uh, briefly on the uh, Land Use Ordinance Steering Committee that I'm uh, representing this board on. Uh, we had one of those, our first one, um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and if you haven't yet, members of the board, um, the Auburn meeting on February 27th, about 10 minutes in on YouTube, um, the gentleman that's running that project manager gives a brief to the board of Alderman. And he pretty well sums up what I got in two hours. He did in 10 minutes. So it was pretty good. Um, and so, uh, and um, yeah, it was two hours. I, was, and, uh, I think it was scheduled for 30. So it was a good thing I didn't have anything else going on that afternoon. So, um, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, real quick, uh, the, what pertains to this board for now is that uh, he's going to have some office hours when he's in town. Um, and I would welcome members of the board to go and um, speak with him during those hours. I'll let everybody know when he's here. Um, if you have questions uh, or if you have concerns, um, I'd like to get him maybe to do a, a brief for us when he's in town. Maybe we do another meeting. I don't know. We'll, we'll play that by ear. Um, tardy, tardy board members. <laughs> Couldn't figure out the elevator. Oh, okay. All right. We'll give you a class <laughs> on the elevator. <laughs> yeah. um, that's basically it um, for 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 my remarks. Um, I do think I need to entertain a motion to limit the time on the public comment. I make a motion. We limit the public comment to three minutes. Do I have I'll a second? second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, we're going to move on to item number five, uh, public comment. We're going to uh, limit it to three minutes. I'm running the timer. There's one down here and on the TVs. We'll start with Mr. Stephen. And you know your last name. I'm not going to butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes, please. <clears throat> so, yes, my name is Stephen Langenscheid. Um, I'm uh, put in this petition to for the rezoning. Um, we're um, the owners of the Old Phoenix Cafe, and um, we are planning on doing the rezoning because we're currently not allowed um, for outside consumption. The zoning we currently have, um, and we have been asked by our patrons a lot that walk their dogs or come there with their children. In the summer, they would like to sit outside or just have a spot where they can bring their dogs, which we're legally not allowed to have inside because we're having food and we're having an open kitchen. So for the health department, they don't like us to have animals. <clears throat> and so we're wanting to provide them a spot to sit as well so they can, when they walk their dogs, come out, sit there, have a toast, cafe or anything else. And that's why we put in the petition. All right. Thank you much. Uh, next person is Leanne McKay. Hi, I'm Leanne McKay, and I live at 709 Craven, which is directly a block behind the Old Penix. Okay. And while it's a lovely store, and I'm very happy they're doing well, I don't want noise. And if there are people sitting outside, 
it's going to be noisy, and I'm going to be in my backyard, and I'm going to be hearing the noise. And I live in a neighborhood. I don't live in a restaurant zone. I didn't think when I bought my house, so I'm just very concerned about the noise. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming out. Go to George Brake. I'm George Brake, and uh, I have a question. Uh, what would uh, C5 zoning permit that is not permitted now? Um, there's all sorts of rumors flying around the neighborhood, and uh, nobody really knows what's going to happen. So could you answer that question? Uh, I can comment on uh, that. I'll defer to Kendrick. Um, just in, in reference to what it actually allows for. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Uh, but in reference to what it allows for, there's a table that we actually have in our, within our land use ordinance, and it gives you a description as to what's permitted by right or essentially permitted by special use permit or not permitted I, at I all. I still can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, it might be easiest. I have a table with me, and I can give you a table. Sure. Uh, that you can see the different uses that are allowed to actually take place there. All right, thank you much. And next we're gonna to go to Sam, looks like, Patrice. Patrice, all right. Uh, I'm at 411 Queen Street, uh, the neighboring to the lot. Uh, in my research, I haven't seen, the building is zoned commercial, professional, and is there supposed to be a special use permit for a restaurant? So in right now, currently it's zoned as C-4, and he has the ability to be permitted by right in terms of the restaurant that he currently has. It's just the factor, the difference, I guess, is what Mr. Stevens said, the consumption outside of the building. And consumption is not allowed um, unless by special use permit outside the building. Okay. And then my next question would be, Per restaurant code, isn't there so many parking spaces? There is parking standards that are required. Um, that was actually reassessed, uh, as I can tell you myself personally, uh, through staffing. And a parking lot was actually created to um, provide more spaces and to be current with what the use is for. There's, there's not just that store. It's uh, three in total, actually. And the parking lot is where? So they have actually addressed the, some of the parking um, not some, but in terms of the three different stores that are there, they made an actual gravel parking lot, which in accordance with our ordinance, they have the ability to do so as long as it doesn't exceed six spaces. They added those spaces. And in the different time frames that these stores operate, there are other spaces that are available for each store or uh, essentially each store can occupy so many spaces as long as they're not running simultaneously. So if this passes and we go outside, then what happens with parking? And my concern is, is we, our driveway's been blocked several times, and I've tried to address that. So the parking should be settled at this time based on what they've done currently. They upgraded their actual parking lot um, to the gravel spaces. I physically have seen that. <clears throat> and so basically, they've already satisfied the requirement. <clears throat> but if this passes, what happens? So the only thing that would change ultimately um, is the factor of being able to consume outside of uh, where he's currently at right now, based on the C4 zoning district designation, it takes a special use permit. They, or the applicant's elected to do a rezoning, which would permit him by right to have outside consumption. Um, now, if things in the future, uh, if he adds more tables or decides to expand on the current use, parking has to be reassessed. So, or if a different use takes place in that structure, it has to be reassessed again. And so will alcohol be served outside? Covered? In, in the or? event that he receives the rezoning, but he still has to go to the Board of Aldermen after this uh, point as well. This isn't the, the completion of the rezoning. Okay. So. Yeah, my, my objection is really the parking situation and right. if alcohol is going to be used outside with children, grandchildren, and things like that right next door playing, 
it's already pretty dangerous there with the train tracks. I mean, that's, that we can't control. Yes, sir. No, I, I understand. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else that missed the sign-up sheet that would like to speak? Um, sure. You, uh, uh, up here. Can you come up? Yeah, it's you're on videotape and all that. Yeah. So for the for the noise, um, we also considered that, and we're for the for the noise, we did consider that, and we're planning on putting in um, shrubs all the way. I guess like a bushes all the way around the property. Um, we're having um, that approved by the Historic Society right now um, and to like dim in the noise. And also we would limit the hours um, where people can sit outside. Um, our main topic right now is really for the daytime um, when people walk their dogs and come by because a lot of times they walk by and they can't come in. Um, and also we cannot have seating in the back or in the front right now with that zoning, and that's our main reason why we're asking for this. I hope that answers your question. And for the parking. Yes, if we can have one speaker at a time, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, yeah, w w okay. one, one speaker at a time. I'll let you come up quickly once he's done. Okay. For the parking, um, yes, so we have, um, Kendrick told us where we have to have our parking spots. So we have this separated. We're actually going to put a fence in once we get the approval from the Historic Society for that one as well. Oh, this, I forgot the right H naming for it. Yeah, right. HPC. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, and this is going to be put in. So this will be the separation from the actual parking lot, which will be on the premises, and then the outside area where people will be able to sit. OK. okay. Thank All right, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm just a little confused because I've heard Mr. Chair, it, speakers it can be direct their comments to the board. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry. Again? You have to speak to to uh you're you're commenting to the board. Okay, okay. okay. sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm a little concerned also because I've heard several different scenarios of what's gonna happen. I've heard cornhole and family friendly games, I've heard food and beverages outside. Um and I'm just really, really nervous that the next thing on the list is going to be live music, and um, <coughs> that will be very noisy. And I also wonder about the bishop's home, which is right next door. Um, and I'm, I don't know that anybody even knew that this hearing was taking place. Um, I don't know anybody in my neighbor. I don't see anybody except one neighbor here, and I know that other people aren't happy about it. And I just think it's kind of odd that usually we get notices from Hydra and of what's being discussed and nothing. I just uh, found out about it by a fluke. So thank you. Uh, well, uh, just just one point. Hydra is, is a private organization. Um, I believe, Kendrick, you advertised uh, 100 feet yes, from the that's property? Correct. That's correct. So it goes 100 feet within the uh, property line, essentially. So those within that area or that buffer zone would have received a letter or should have based on the list that got generated. And, and also, just one other point of clarity. The, um, we are an administrative body. Our recommendation or lack of recommendation, however the vote goes, will go to the Board of Aldermen, and they ultimately decide the zoning. So um, I, I welcome uh, to, to speak to your neighbors or Hydra or however you guys want to do it. If, if more people want to comment during that time, um, citizens are welcome. There will be a, a time for that comment. Um, Okay, anybody else? All right, uh, with no public comment, and it's not on this agenda, I'm just going to briefly open it up to the board. Does the board have any comments on the land use ordinance or scheduling or anything else? Anything you'd like to um, I, I'd like to, I know we've talked with, in the past about the parking, working group, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do we have a way forward yet, Mr. Chairman, on setting something like that up? Is there something we need to do in the interim officially? That is an excellent question. And I meant to ask um, Kendrick about this. Are uh, rules and procedures, where are we at on that? So right now, Mr. Chairman, the rules and procedures, unfortunately, will have to be um, probably a little bit longer uh, in terms of getting that together. However, I intend to send you a couple different documents that 
pertain to some other rules and procedures for different cities and just to get an evaluation from this board in terms of what they may be looking at and what might be concerning or not be concerning, which you may or may not be for, so that we can try to compile and kind of compose that as well. Okay, and in that rules and procedures, will there be a way or how we go about forming working groups? Is there, that or is there a way on doing that? That can be a point of emphasis to look at. We can absolutely do that. I don't want to speak uh, kind of before I sure. get a chance to evaluate it myself. Um, I don't know that directly, but we can definitely take a look into that. Okay, um, I, I know Mr. Ingram has um, expressed a lot of interest in, and I, I think the way forward now is to go down the working group route, um, but uh, that's for a, a, a broader discussion or figuring out how the best way of doing that is. So, Jamie, how does the HPC set up work groups? Is there some language we could steal from them? Possibly. And Madam Director, that's a very fine point. There are several citizen boards and commissions in the city of New Bern that have rules of procedures. Um, their procedures vary depending on their purpose and their scope and their statutory authority. So I'm happy to share some of the rules of procedure. For instance, the HPC, the Redevelopment Commission, um, both of those entities have pathways to do working groups and the pathways are different. Um, so there's some flavors right here locally that you may be able to benefit from. Okay. And, and to that point, I mean, we've had conversations in the past about what are we actually allowed to do mm -hmm. as a board, and I would like to see the rules and procedures, maybe the front part of that document, document exactly what this board is allowed to do. Because if you read, I've read through the statutes, and thank you for providing all that information, the ordinances and the state statutes about it, and it seems very open. There's a lot of things that we could do if we chose to. Um, but, you know, we need to figure that out in the rules and procedures and figure it out as a board what we want to do. All right. Anything else? The only other question I had was minutes. I know this is an odd point, but I know I, I checked the website minutes. I think we stopped having minutes on the website like in September. Yeah, the, the minutes have been challenging just to kind of comment on that. Okay. Uh, we are actively still working through trying to see if we can accommodate. Okay, that. as long as it's not been forgotten, then no. that's fine. I know you guys are busy, so I guess yes, I get it. Okay, that's it. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, all right. <laughs> no problem. I could keep going if you I, I know you could. Um, let's move on from that to item number six. <clears throat> A, the 624 Hancock Street and 413 Queen Street presenting. Kendrick, do you have a presentation for us? Just to start off, good evening, Mr. Chair, and to the board. And I know there's kind of been some previous discussion already, but this is the actual presentation for this item. So this is the rezoning uh, 002-839-2024. And this is for 624 Hancock Street and 413 Queen Street uh, rezoning. So the applicant is Mr. Stephen Langenscheidt, and then the owner is CSR LLC, uh, LLC. And the location is 624 Hancock Street and 413 Queen Street. Current zoning is uh, commercial hey, Kendrick, four. Can, can you give me just a little more volume? Oh, sure. Please. Let me see if I can. I, I apologize. Let me see if I can bring this up there. Awesome. All right. So the current zoning Perfect. is commercial four, uh, C-4 for abbreviation. And the proposed zoning here is commercial 5A, uh, C-5A. And then the parcel identification numbers have been 8 dash, or identified as 8 dash 003 dash 128 and 8 dash 00328000. The size is 0 0.37 total acres roughly. And the commercial four zoning district analysis, this is directly from the land use ordinance and basically just gives a description um, as far as for neighborhood businesses. Uh, that's essentially what its purpose is. Um, to accommodate for those retailing or style of goods and services, essentially. And the commercial 5A uh, zoning district analysis, similar in some natures, um, but it references also to allow for, I guess, more professional offices, museums, um, also institutional type of uh, businesses as well. So it's kind of added in, in a way, but they're, they're similar in taste if you will so and just to provide that uses comparison 
here you have on the left hand side uh, commercial 4, C 4, and you have on the right hand side commercial 5A, um, the C 5A. And basically, there's some references for the residential uses, which again, very similar, such as I'll just give a quick example single family detached, both permitted by right in accordance with commercial 4 and commercial 5A. And then if you slide down to the non residential uses, um, I'll kind of just touch on one in particular, the no substantial carryout service, no drive-in service, or, uh, or excuse me, service or consumption outside fully enclosed structure allowed. That is a special use currently in the C4 zoning district. When you flip to the commercial 5A side, that is actually permitted by right. So in the consideration, um, the proposed rezoning involves two properties that are currently both zone commercial. And essentially the adjacent commercial, or excuse me, the adjacent properties that are surrounding it, they also uh, are industrial two. There are several districts actually, industrial two, commercial four, commercial five, residential uh, six here, and then you have residential eight. So you have a mixture of zoning districts that surround this property, some commercial, some residential. Um, it may be considered reasonable uh, as far as for some of the adjacent commercial zoning regarding the request by the applicant to go from C4 to C-5A. And if the board has any, or excuse me, um, let me actually finish here. For the subject property, here's the actual picture for the property with the sign posted as well. And actually we have a buffer map. This is the radius essentially that would have been touched for the 100 foot notice requirement. So any of the properties that are within that should have received the notice. And here you have the vicinity map for the actual parcels. And that's followed by the aerial. Um, and this again is highlighted in red. And lastly, the zoning map, which reflects all those different districts that I just touched on. Um, you've got several there. And then um, the actions needed essentially would be to adopt a consistency statement and the recommendation for the Board of Aldermen. And if the board has any questions at this time, I can try to take those. Board have any questions for Kendrick? All right, I'll open it up to discussion on this item. Uh, Kendrick, can you, I'm sorry, could you go back to the zoning map, please? Zoning map is a. Sorry, Mr. Rusty, but zoning no, that's the zoning map. That's what you were looking at. And the, yeah, those two those two properties that are C five on the bottom right. Yes, are those sir. residences currently. I actually did not see as to whether those are residences or if they have commercial uses. There is more if you uh, bring this map out further. There is a whole section of C five actually that is on that side. I do not know the specific uses for each one. It just seems like there's there's a whole lot of residential around it. There absolutely is residential that is uh, actually abutting it to the um, eastern side, northeastern. Um, and you've also, you've got, like I said, a combination of different districts that are kind of surrounding these two properties. Any more questions for Kendrick? Or anybody else? And board. Um, okay. Then I will. Um, I'll entertain a motion on this item. And Mr. Chair, in the spirit of being helpful, the first motion that you might entertain is regarding the consistency and reasonable statement. Bingo. That's why we have to, we have to do two motions: right? the consistency and then the recommendation. Yes, sir. Okay. So I will recommend a, or I will uh, ask for a, um, entertain a motion on consistency or inconsistency. And the consistency statement specifically has to do with the consistency with the land use ordinance? Yes, sir. Consistency, compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistency with adopted city land use plans, and that it's reasonable. And the 
I mean, basically what we're talking about here is the reason for the rezoning is because they want to serve people outside the restaurant in the back of the restaurant. When you're analyzing rezoning applications, you must consider all possible uses within Correct. the various zoning designations. Understood. But I can, it is, isn't it possible we can still consider the, the use that's being proposed? As one of As the potential one of uses. Those. Right. Yes. But it, in the spirit of a full analysis, you want to consider each of the possible uses in the various classifications. Okay. So... Can we bring up that slide that compares yeah, the two? Can we go back to the C4 and C5? I was about to ask the same question. And the reason I say that, Mr. Ingram, is if the property were to be sold or right. otherwise conveyed, that zoning would attach. So the use could change to any of the uses that are either permitted by right or by special use permit in that zoning designation. And what is being proposed is a change in zoning, not a change in use. Understood. And before you is that illustration, and, and I know that you all are familiar with the table of permissible uses, um, but the designations there with the Z, as in zebra, are uses that are permitted by right versus the S on your screen, which indicates uses that are by special use permit only. just as a point of discussion, I mean, considering the amount of residential that's around it, um, allowing for the uses under C5A, in my opinion, is not appropriate. That's just my opinion, just to let the board know. That's the way I feel about it. Is that a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we decline the uh, rezoning application. Or that we recommend to the Board of Aldermen to oh, not. We're doing <coughs> the consistency first. <coughs> do I have to do the consistency if it's not consistent? So, yeah. Mr. Ingram, is your motion that the Board find that the rezoning application is not consistent with adjacent land uses and not reasonable? I think you have two before you tonight. That's correct. Okay. So, that's the motion that, that I. The motion is that we find it not consistent and not appropriate for the zoning around it. Is that reasonable? If that's your motion. That's my motion. All right. Do I have a second to that motion? I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Start with uh, Board Member Deere. Uh, yes. So I, I agree with their uh, proposal. Okay. Board member Dunn? Yes. Uh, board member Aluzo? Yes. Chairman Jefferson? No. And then board member Ingram? So a yes in this particular case is to agree with the motion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Board member, I'm just calling for the record, Kelly Kaiser? Absent. Board member Brownell? No. And board member Ballard. Yes. All right, motion carries. So I go to the next item. The next motion that you want to entertain oh, is what you recommend or do not recommend. Okay. I'll I, entertain I that move one. that we that we do not recommend uh, approval of this rezoning application by the board of Alderman. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. I will do a, another roll call vote. Board member Deer? Yes. Okay. Board member Dunn? Yes. Board member Aluzo? Yes. Chairman Jefferson? No. Board member Rusty Ingram? Yes. And then board member Kelly Kaiser? Board member Brownell? No. And board member Ballard? Yes. All right, motion carries. Moving on to item number 6B, land use ordinance text amendment. You guys have a brief on that one? Yes, I'll give you a quick explanation of okay. this item. I 
<laughs> this has gone rogue. Uh, good evening. Um, we have been referred something back to us to reevaluate from the Board of Aldermen. In lieu of a uh, staff report on this, you have received a copy of the email in your packet sent, Kendrick sent out directing us what they have asked us to do. At their last Board of Aldermen meeting, um, they had questions on the boundary of the Central Retail Court, which of course is the area we studied for a good part of last year that um, exempts parking requirements. Just as a little bit of a refresher, uh, we did have a public hearing on that issue on October 10th. They did make some changes. What we, at this board's level, recommended to them um, included a boundary that included the convention center that got dropped out of there, uh, with the thought being like the other large parcels in there. Um, perhaps if that was to become redeveloped, we'd want to ensure that it was still held to parking standards. And they were uh, very serious about maintaining the existing parking that we had. And we had toyed back and forth for several months with language that possibly gave applicants an out to go to the Board of Adjustment if at some point they wanted to reduce the parking spaces that existed on October 10th. And um, we, we eliminated that option. So the parking that is in this area perpetually stays. And that's where we got, and we included a copy of what was adopted for your review there. So this is what our map looks like of the central retail core after uh, the surgery we did on it last year. So this, this has been what has been used since October 10th. It reflects kind of what I just described. Remember, we used to go to Craven Street and stop, and we used to go to the north side of South Front Street and stop. And so this is, after those amendments were made, what, what is considered the central retail core right now. What they have asked us was specifically to look at a property that is just south of this boundary here. And Kendra, can you help move me? Actually, move on to the next one for me, please. So you'll see that red hatched area, that's 119 Middle Street. They had questions on why this was exempted. Um, when we looked at this map, uh, we were primarily looking at commercial uses. And we didn't get into the single family uses. This, this is what that property was being used for and is being used for at that time, so it was not included. There's several others around there, if you'll advance two slides for me, please, that are in a very similar situation where they are just adjacent to this boundary and they would like us to consider whether or not it is appropriate to include um, either one or all three of those properties in this boundary and they have called for a public hearing on this to take place and would like your input on if you like this option two that includes all three or the previous option that just includes 119. Um, so that, that is what we are being asked to discuss this evening. There's several options, Let's see if I can move this here, that you can make. Uh, of course, we have to make a consistency statement Jamie has drafted up some language that proposal one adds in 119, proposal two adds in the three similar par parcels, 119 and the two others. Um, or you can stand by uh, your recommendation not to change the boundary. So that's what we're asking for your discussion on tonight. I'm happy to try to answer questions on this before you start doing that. So 119 was, was a residence previously and I know there's been discussion, but was it, is it zoned C1, C2, or C2? Mm, uh, honestly, I can't specifically recall what it's currently zoned right now. Um, it's most likely probably C1 or C2. I thought all of downtown was either C1 or C2. It's in the C1 HPC C2, area, and that's generally HPC what it is. Area. So it's going to be C1 or C2. I apologize, I can't recall which one it is. That's good. And so, of course, used as a single-family residence, it's exempted from having the parking right. spaces right. to be used commercially. Right. And one of our um, goals was to ensure we were re providing the ability to preserve our historic buildings and keep them usable. Right. Um, it is usable as a single family residence, but it, if it is to change to another use, it would have um, more, require more parking spaces. Surrounded completely by commercial. <laughs> and so they are looking at uh, whether you would recommend or not recommend affording those three additional pieces the same benefits that are enjoyed by the rest of the central retail court. Well, but 115 and 117 are currently being used as commercial spaces, right? 
and they have parking behind them. And the thought process was to keep that line to, to if you would choose to include those, <laughs> yes. So if they were to change uses, we wouldn't check the parking. If you pulled them in, they would enjoy the benefit of the central retail core exemption. Okay. Well, I, I, just from my view of this, there's not similarly situated. And that's why you have different options. Right, before and you. 119 has no parking associated with it. Um, zero. <laughs> zero. Uh, expect, except the two spaces on the street. But one, 117 and 115 have 32 spaces behind the two buildings. So are those sky sale or are those No, those are, those are specific for uh, Edward Jones okay. and Colwell Banker All right. back there. Uh, okay. it's, it's next to sky sale. Yep. Sky sale is there. And then the house at 119, um, you know, if you ever want to use it for commercial purposes, it doesn't have any parking. Correct. And, and Mr. Chair, just to, as a point of clarity, if you make a recommendation to change the boundary to the central retail, retail core at all, per the ordinance and per the drafts that are before you, any existing structures would have to maintain the parking that they have. Right. They can't diminish it. Um, so if there's a subsequent change in use that requires a greater level of parking, they may find themselves in difficulty if you don't expand the boundary. But if you do expand the boundary, they're not going to lose any parking spaces, if that makes any sense. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I have a question. When did the other two properties start being discussed? Because I know I had discussions on the, the house um, with people, um, but I, I didn't know that the other two, is that, I just missed it. Is that a, a I new have not update? had discussions on that, but it's drafted as an option for you due to the geography. Okay. Yeah, and Chairman, I haven't had any discussions pertaining to those two properties either. Okay. And, and I will tell you, Mr. Chair, in my drafting of ordinances for your consideration and for that of the board, I noticed those two properties to the south. Um, so they're before you tonight for consideration. And, you know, after you have your discussion and consider all the factors, you're welcome to adopt that option or not. Okay. All right. Yeah, just, I, I, um, I mean, I, I drove down there to look at the particular property. I didn't look at the other ones because I didn't know we were talking about those. Um, so, um, yeah, no, I don't like that, but that's okay. They're, they're different proposals. Um, I will open it up to the board for discussion on these items. <clears throat> well, I, I think since the ordinance was put into place to expand the boundary, it puts 119 in a difficult situation. To, you know, to remain as a residence in that commercial area is a difficult thing. Yeah. And then to make it a commercial, some sort of commercial use with no parking spaces, I don't see how Kendrick would ever tell them they could go do that. So I, I think, um, in my opinion, you know, 119, we should we should extend it for them. For 115 and 117, they have 32 spaces behind their buildings. Yeah. I just don't think it's it's required uh, to do that. And yeah, I so that. I would, uh, I'll allow other discussion, but I'll make a motion if anybody wants one. <laughs> well, is there any, well, you're welcome to always make a motion and we can have a discussion yeah, on that. So, um, well, I'll make a motion then that we approve um, the, the, the uh, inclusion of 119 in the exempted area, um, and that it's consistent with the land use ordinance and appropriate. So that would be proposal one, correct? Proposal one, correct, yeah, 119, proposal one. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that item? Hearing none, uh, in the spirit of consistency, let's do a roll call vote on this. <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> so, board member Deering? Yes. Board member Dunn? Yes. Board member Aluzo? Yes. Chairman Jefferson? Yes. Board member, <clears throat> excuse me, board member Ingram? Yes. And board member Kaiser? Board member Brownell? Yes. And board member Ballard? Yes. All right, and then I will entertain a motion of sending it to the board, a recommendation. I think Mr. Ingram's motion enca encapsulated the recommendation to the board as well as the consistency okay. statement. Right. So if you're happy, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> All 
like, I like keeping the lawyer happy. Um, okay, uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Uh, any discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Brad, I apologize for being late. It's all right. No problem.